Goblin launch detected. Uh-oh. <laughs> this video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. If you're looking for cards in the US, look no further as you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA to get you 5% off anything on the site. Or if you're in Canada like me, you can use the same promo code at Multizone to get 10% off your orders of singles. If cards aren't what you're looking for, Original Magic Art has playmats, tokens, and sweet art that you can use that same promo code to help you get 5% off your order there. And if you just want to help out the channel, you can always consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month and join the generic goblin gang. Hey gang and welcome back. Today's game finds us at Kessel Run, and new to the channel is David, playing Prosper. He keeps Share the Spoils, Lily of the Blade Reforged, Two Swamps, Blood Crypt, Mountain, and Rakdos Carnarium. New Shane has sleeved up Ishin since so many people have asked for it, keeping it as per Sentinel, Godo, Audric Lunark Marshall, Smoldering Marsh, Fury Calm Snarl, Mountain, and Deadly Rollick. We've got a new Dom on our hands playing Zyrus, keeping Beseju who endures, Mountain, Island, Dictate of Crufix, Combine Chrysalis, Kazool Tyrant of the Cliffs, and Progenitor Mimic. Johnny is also back playing Kaima the Fractured Calm, keeping Dragon Grip, Smoke Spirit's Aid, Rancor, Insurrection, Blighted Woodland, Forest, and Overgrowth. Shane wins an eye roll and starts us off. Shane plays a Fury Calm Snarl, revealing a mountain from his hand. It comes in untapped, and he casts Ever Sentinel. Dom plays an island and passes. Johnny draws, plays a forest, and passes. David just plays a swamp and passes back to Shane. Shane plays a mountain for turn, and moving to combat swings the Esper Sentinel at Dom for one. Dom plays a forest and casts Combine Chrysalis. This triggers Shane's Esper Sentinel, and he draws a card. Johnny draws and plays a Blighted Woodland, passing. David shocks in a Blood Crypt, taking two, and casts Share the Spoils. New Shane draws a card, and each player then exiles the top card of their library under the enchantment. New Shane plays a Caves of Koilos, and loses a life to it as he taps it for mana to help cast his commander, Ishin, two heavens as one. Moving to combat, he swings the Sentinel, dealing one to Johnny, and passes turn. Dom plays a Mountain for turn, and casts a Cryptolith Rites that he'd exiled with the spoils, and pays the one for the Sentinel. Because he cast a card that was exiled by Cher, he has to exile his top card to replace it. Johnny plays a Forest for turn, and casts Overgrowth, Enchanting his Forest, and New Shane draws. David plays a Mountain for turn, and then pays 3 mana for Layla the Blade Reforged. He moves to combat, swinging her at Dom for 3. Upon attacks, she exiles the top card of David's library, which is a Swamp. This puts a plus one plus one counter onto her. New Shane plays a Plains for turn and casts Fervent Charge. Moving to combat, the Sentinel goes at Dom and Ishin goes at Johnny, and both creatures get two triggers from the Fervent Charge for a total of plus four plus four. Dom plays a Mountain for turn and then casts the Arcane Signet exiled by Johnny. Because the card had been exiled with Share the Spoils, he has to exile his top card to replace it. Johnny plays Land for turn, and casts David's copy of Mindstone, exiling Swiftfoot Boots from the top of his library. He then enchants Ishin with Rancor, and passes to David. David starts his turn, and moves straight to combat. He swings Layla as Shane, exiling Scheming Symmetry, and putting another plus one plus one counter onto her. In his post-combat main phase, David then plays a Smoldering Marsh, and makes a deal with New Shane that he doesn't get attacked by Ishin for one turn if he lets him tutor with the Scheming Symmetry. And New Shane draws, and then both players tutor for a card on top of their libraries. New Shane plays his own Smoldering Marsh for turn, and then pays two for Arcane Signet. He then casts Smothering Tithe, to which Dom responds by flashing out Dictate of Crufix. Moving to combat, New Shane swings Ishin at Johnny for nine, and the Sentinel goes at David for five. Dom draws an extra card for turn, and Shane makes two treasures. Dom then casts his own commander in his main phase, Zyrith the Writhing Storm. 
He plays a mountain for turn and casts Soul Ring, but is unable to pay the tax and chain draws. Dom then uses Soul Ring to help cast Swiftfoot Boots, to which Shane responds with a deadly Rollick, which is free to cast as he controls his commander, to take out Dom's Iris. Dom also has to exile the top card of his library for share the spoils and passes to Johnny. Johnny draws his two for turn, and Shane makes two more treasures. Johnny then plays a land and casts his commander, Kaima the Fractured Calm. Moving to his end step, each opponent's creatures that are enchanted by an aura he controls becomes goaded, and he puts a plus one plus one counter onto Kaima. David draws his two, and Shane makes two more treasures. David casts his commander, Prosper Tomebound, and goes to combat. He swings Layla at Shane, and as she attacks, exiles Profane Tutor, putting another plus one plus one counter onto her. New Shane then takes the hit for six. In his post combat main phase, David then plays New Shane's Ghost Quarters at land for turn, exiling his top card to shared spoils, and then moves to his end step and exiles another card thanks to Prosper. New Shane draws two and plays an isolated chapel in his main phase. He pays two mana for a fighter class and searches his library for an equipment. He finds Lightning Greaves, and then casts them. He then casts Sword of the Anime. He then uses some treasures to level up Warrior Class to level 2. He equips the Sword of the Anime to Ishin, followed by the Lightning Greaves, and moves to combat. He can't swing at Johnny, so he sings Ishin at Dawn for 10, and gets to find two basic lands to come into play tap thanks to the Sword Triggers, and then his commander connects, and New Shane passes. Dom draws two, but doesn't pay for the tithe. He recasts Zyrus, and then pays one to equip the boots. Moving to combat, he swings his commander at Johnny for three. Johnny can't block, and takes three commander damage, which has Dom and him drawing three cards. And Shane gets to make five treasure tokens, cause Johnny pays the one for one of the tithe triggers. Dom also gets to make three snake tokens, and then passes through his phases to his end step, discarding down to seven. Johnny draws two, and Dom gains another snake token from Zyrus seeing his opponent draw an extra card, and Shane makes two more treasures. Johnny casts Smoke Spirit's Aid and targets the Esper Sentinel, Prosper, and Layla. He then casts Dry to the Ilsian Grove, and moving to his end step, goads all the relevant creatures that are modified, and puts four plus one plus one counters onto his commander. David moves straight to combat, and swings Prosper and Layla at Shane. Layla exiles the Izzet Chemister off the top, putting another plus one plus one counter onto her. Shane blocks Layla with the Sentinel, and he takes one damage from Prosper. When the Sentinel dies, Johnny makes a treasure, and Shane takes one from the Aura. David then casts the Chemister from Exile, making a treasure token from Prosper. He plays a Zalfrin Void and scries one. He then pays five mana and casts Stolen Strategy. Shane plays a Temple of Triumph which comes in tapped and scries him one. And follows up once he's done scrying by casting Urbras the Hidden. He then casts Silverblade Paladin and Soul Balance with his commander Ishin. He then casts Goto Bandit Warlord and as it comes in, goes to find Helmet of the Host. Before Shane can equip though, Dom channels Beseju who endures to take out the combo, and Shane gets to find a land. Shane then moves to combat, and swings Ishin at David, Urbrask, the Soulblade Paladin, and Goto at Johnny. Before blocks, Shane casts Path to Exile and takes out Johnny's commander. Johnny goes to find a basic land to put into play tapped, while Shane gets to find two from his Sword of the Anime, and the players then move to block. Johnny blocks the Silver Blade but still takes 12, while David gets taken out fully by Ishin. After combat, Goto untaps all Samurais, and Shane gets an extra combat step. At this point, New Shane makes a slight mistake, and casts Odric Lunark Marshall thinking he has an extra main phase, but I'm sure if he'd realized it at the time, he would have cast Odric Lunark Marshall in his pre-combat main phase. Moving to his next combat step, because Ishin is still goaded, Nushane has to swing at a Dom, 
and Ishin gets pumped again twice by the Fervent Charge, making him massive and having Trample and Double Strike, which means that even with blocks, Dom is all but dead. Johnny knows that he's not able to fight through this, and even with Code since he's the only player, it means that Nushane can attack him either way, and concedes the game to Nushane. Game review time. I think this game did a pretty good job of showcasing three of the four decks. Unfortunately for Dominic, Zyrus didn't really get going too much, and that was mostly due to the Rollick taking out his commander before he could put the boots on. I will say that I've actually played with Dominic a few more times since this game was filmed, and Zyrus is actually very powerful. He gets out of hand very quickly, even though you're drawing a bunch of cards, and he does a great job of protecting his commander while building up a massive board of snake tokens. David did what Prosper does best, which is exile cards, get some treasures, and smack some face. I've wanted to play Share the Spoils a lot, but since most of my games until recently were based around webcam, I opted not to since it would have been a huge headache, so it was great to see an action in person. Johnny's Kaima deck is something I hope we see again on camera, because I feel like we only scratched the surface of this deck. I love the fact that he was slapping auras onto other creatures, and the idea of using Rancor offensively to not only power up an opponent's creature, but simultaneously make it so they can't attack you is just beautiful, beautiful tech. New Shane's Ishin deck did exactly what I think it wants to do, which was abuse on attack triggers. The early Fervent Charge certainly helped, and Goto wasn't bad, but something that people need to be aware of is that although you get two combat steps, and although you get to untap twice now, you're doing so in the current Declare Attacker step, not one after another. Not in each of the combat phases. This means you have to have something like Vigilance to allow your creatures to be untapped after attacking, but it's still pretty good. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., Multizone, Original Magic Art, and Alter Sleeves. But it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, Friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.